Welcome back, everybody, to Pulseo TV and its podcast, Probando Fuerza. It's me, the face of arm wrestling in Puerto Rico, Manuel Sanchez, the voice of the sport in Latin America. And I'm joined tonight with uh, 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 a guy that's younger than me, but that I admire a lot. You know, thank you, buddy. Uh, thank he you. has he's proving he's he's making his own history, and he's proving that this could be more than it's already is and and when we have the conversation we, we you you understand what i'm saying so uh we have odin larrett how you doing buddy i'm doing great thank you for having me on thank you I'm, i'm i'm doing very good well uh i'm honored to have you and and i thank you for accepting the invitation i i had your father on like two years ago and we talked a lot and 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 we talked a lot when he was here in puerto rico we we talked about you and your brother and your sister and everything, you know, it was, it was a great time. And, 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 and I, uh, nobody knew that when he was here in Puerto Rico and we were talking about you and your brother and your sister, that a whole new story, a whole new chapter of arm wrestling in the Lair family was about to begin. We didn't know that. Yeah. But this is why I wanted to, uh, to talk to you and maybe, maybe, maybe just maybe in, in the future, maybe you can, come down to Puerto Rico and, and, and do a seminar or do whatever, yeah. whatever, whatever you want to do, because you're your own man and you're writing your own history, you know? And, and just, 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 let's just start with questions that I really have about you, you know, uh, actually, how tall are you? I, I'm around six, three. I haven't measured myself in a bit, but last time I checked, I was six, three. So Not quite as tall as my dad, but but I'm close. But your dad is like six six, right? He's six five, six six, somewhere around there. Yeah, yeah. So he's a big guy. And, oh yeah. And big what's your current what's your current weight? Your body weight right now? My current weight, I think I just weighed in at two thirty, so that's about one five kilo. So you've been around that weight for a while now, right? Um, I, I've been, I've been bouncing around a bit. So what I did is, uh, after, after whisper, I tried to get as big as I could. I bulked up for James as much as I could because it was open weight and I knew he was going to be heavy. So I got to about 235, but that was not like, like in the shape I am now. Now I'm a whole lot leaner at 230. So in this, in this, in this current state, I have the most muscle I've ever had, but I'm a little bit leaner than when I pulled James, for example. So you're telling me you're a lot leaner. Have you changed anything in your lifting and your training? I'm I'm referring about are you lifting weights like uh other than a specific arm wrestling training? Um, everything I do is 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 pretty much arm wrestling training. I do a couple other things every once in a while. I'll throw in some hypertrophy phases, I'll do some stuff like more kind of blood flow, more casual to try to just stay healthy everywhere. But most of what I do is arm wrestling focused or at least very arm wrestling involved. Like, like the, the most non arm wrestling lift I do is a JM press, which is quite arm wrestling involved and helps strengthen all the tendons and ligaments of my elbow. Yeah, yeah, and 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 you come from a line of men that start things in history. You know, that's that's yeah. your your that's like your birthright, right? <laughs> so, uh, knowing that you're getting leaner and you're still training basically a specific for arm wrestling would you consider yeah. down the road when you're older just to let me let me let me think of a way to say it that makes sense like to be healthier but but not healthier like like have good cholesterol or anything like that it's healthier yeah. for for the sport like like uh for being stronger would would you add up uh any like power lifting movements or training To your regimen? Um, it's hard for me to say at this point. So I I actually kind of started as a bodybuilder. Before I really got into arm wrestling, I was doing bodybuilding lifting. I was training that stuff. And and there's a difference. There's a difference between training for whole body and strength and muscle size than there is for training for arm wrestling strength. I have personally found that, that although there is carryover, it's just how much energy do you have? How much time do you have? What's the best use? In my opinion, it's better to train specifics. It's better to train my cup, my back pressure, my roll, my rise. Every aspect of arm wrestling, 
I, I feel like is more valuable than just these pure powerlifting exercises. Now, the powerlifting exercises are very important and they can help with overall general strength. But what I'm going for is not general strength. I'm going for specific strengths. I feel like it's, I'm never going to have a match and be like, oh, I wish I had a stronger bench. I wish I had a stronger squat. It's going to be like, no, I wish I had a stronger bicep. I wish I had a stronger cup. No, that's what it's going to, in my opinion, that's what it's going to be. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. And 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 the reason I'm, I ask is because my first sport was arm wrestling. You know, I started arm wrestling when I was 16 years old. You know, I, yeah. you know, even earlier, you know, 13 years old in school, you know, in tables and stuff like that. Of course. But, but yeah. doing it, doing it correctly, I started at 16. And and then I went to the uh, bodybuilding phase and then powerlifting phase. And I found during those phases that that certain movements I did in the gym uh, in that kind of training help certain aspects of my arm wrestling. But but you and I are very different. You know, I'm short, you're tall, I'm bulky, my arm is not that long, and my strength is, is, is very different from you. And, and I think that being taller and bigger like you guys are, you find more benefit on the way you train for arm wrestling than adding those those movements uh uh benching and squatting and all that uh to your training because you really don't have the need let's say that you really don't have the need for those movements on your training because you're so big mm -hmm. us that we're small and short and don't have the advantages you have on the table we need to be like stronger in certain areas so guys like you guys don't rip us open that easy yeah. you know Mm -hmm. So I agree totally with you. And I've been arm wrestling for 27, 28 years, you know, in and around the sport, you know. Uh, so so I, I get it. I get it. And it's, and it's really, 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 uh, it's amazing to find something, someone as young as you who can, who gets it like that, you know. Uh, if, anyway, I try, buddy. I try. <laughs> you know. Uh, now. I knew when when your when your father was in Puerto Rico, we we went to to the beach and we were walking barefoot with a lot of stones yeah. on the ground, and it was hard. But but your dad was doing it, you know, like nothing. So what we were talking about, you guys, you and your brother and your sister and everything, talking about family. And 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 I remember I asked him, I asked him what 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 uh. What your your kids want to do, you know, for a profession, for a living, whatever. And I, we were just talking, you know, generally. And I remember the first thing he said, Auden just want to arm wrestle. Yeah, it's he true. wants to arm wrestle. It's true. And and that's my question: when and how you came to that decision in your life that you want to arm wrestle as a profession, like like for your entire life, you know, like like you you're coming into the sport, and you're the really to me to my knowledge. I don't want to disrespect anyone. But to my mm -hmm. knowledge, you're the only guy I know in my 28 years in the sport that it just entered the sport of arm wrestling and it's trying to make a living or or be a professional arm wrestling like like 100 like from the get go. You you didn't you didn't have another another profession like your your dad was a soldier mm -hmm. and everything and other people had other jobs and then jumped into it and then came, came yeah. got back to to jobs. But you're doing it like like you you're setting you know, you're opening the way for people that may come after you. How do you came to, to that decision? Yeah. So, so it's a bit of a long story, but I'll try to, I'll try to get all the major points. So I grew up, uh, infatuated with arm wrestling. I, I, I loved arm wrestling from a very early age. I've competed in a million tournaments over, over my years. I, I was, I grew up around arm wrestling. I really, I, I lived it my entire life, but it was never something that I like really loved. And I was like, this is what I want to do all the time. This is, it just, it, it was something that I just kind of just did. It was just part of life. It was, it wasn't some special thing to me. It was, it was just how I was. So it was very easy for me to start taking it seriously. But the major shift that changed was in high school, I, I wasn't super confident in like grade nine and 10. I, I, I was I, I was a little bit a little more cowardly. I wasn't so brave. So what happened is I got into martial arts. I got into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And and that really helped me kind of build build my confidence. 
be able to work towards something every day a lot more than I have been before. And that made me just it, through the process of that, it made me realize that I wanted to chase arm wrestling, that I wanted to get good at arm wrestling. And in the process of me training, I, I really badly injured my left shoulder, really badly. And it totally put me out. I, I couldn't I couldn't do BJJ, BJJ anymore. I could not compete in any kind of grappling martial art where they were ripping my shoulder. It was just not going to work. So what I did is I started training my right arm because my left was all flinged up and I couldn't move it. In that time, I was like, all right, this is what I want to do. I, I realized I'm like, this is what I want to do. I'm going 100% in. And I'm lucky to be in a position where, where I believe it is possible to make a profession out of this crazy sport, which... I, I'm I'm in a very lucky spot to be able to even consider that as an option, but I'm going to go for it because it's my true passion, and I think I think it's very important to chase what you love in life, and and just do the things that you want to do in life. And for me, what I want to do is get massive and be good at arm wrestling. That's that's actually a very inspiring story. <laughs> Thank you. You know, and and I hope that. All the people that watch this show, when it's out, I hope a lot of young ones watch it and see it, because you sharing with us that you weren't, you know, that confident in yourself, and mm -hmm. that sports and arm wrestling changed that, and and look at you now. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, so, those masks, those masks. Yeah, <laughs> looking massive, like right, your hand and your wrist. It it looks different from the last time I saw you in a match. It looks it look look thicker. It looks thicker now. Yeah, I think so a little bit. Yeah. So uh, injuries. I remember you had an injury. You just told me about the shoulder, but you had an injury. Like you 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 broke an arm or something, right? Broke my right arm. There. Broke my right arm when I was 14. So it's a very interesting story that one. Um, I have the exact same break at the exact same age as John Brzezink did. And, and he claims that it was one of the best things that ever happened to him because it made his elbow integrity and strength way better. And let me tell you, I fully agree. My, my right and my left are different in the elbow, like stability areas. I can, I can feel in my right. If you kind of feel it, there's way more bone. Now it's kind of grown out and like reinforced itself. And I never feel my elbow. I, I, on my left, if I go on a hook and I'm deep and I'm going, I'll kind of feel my elbow and my hurt a bit. I can't, I can't even feel that my right. Doesn't matter position. Doesn't matter how strong the guy is. So I think this injury, for example, has massively helped me. Did you have surgery or did you just let it heal with the cast and stuff? Yeah. So I, I had two surgeries. One surgery was putting the screw in because it, it, it moved. What I had was called an avulsion fracture. It pulled the growth plate off. I, I was, it wasn't necessarily like, a, a, it wasn't a spiral fracture of the humerus or anything. It was nothing like that. It was, it was, My tendon was so was so fired and so going that I actually ripped my growth plate off. So it was so far away from the rest of my like forearm bone that they had to go in and drill it back in and like put a screw in. But the thing is, my body started pushing the screw out on its own. So four months after I healed, they had to go back in and take the screw out. So now I've got no hardware. It's all just it's all just bone again. So you we can we can say you might have a bionic arm. Exactly, bionic arm. Yeah, you know it's 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 funny how nature works. You know, it's funny. Uh, you had that injury, and 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 that arm is had become stronger. It happened. Adaptability. To Adaptability. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's happening. It happened to you, and it's happening to you. And I believe your potential is you're just reaching. Like you're just like scratching the top of your potential. You know, so. That's the subject I wanna I wanna I wanna talk about now. Uh, mm. Your super matches, how how different have they been? You know, and I'm and I'm talking about prep strategy and the actual match. You know, you you've yes. had three big matches. How different, like the evolution of Old Larat from match to match. How how does that look? Yeah, so I'll start even even further back if you'd like. I'll start all the way back on my first real super match, which was with which was with Arm Wars, it was a dark card. I pulled Chris Ham, followed by Nil Nasran. Oh, yeah. That was my that was my first ever real super match. Now, that one, I didn't really do any super specific training. I was just training as hard as I could. I knew I was going to pull somebody, so I was kind of peaking. And once I did that, 
I learned a lot. That was my first ever super match I did. So I learned so much after that I pulled, I pulled a couple things in my club, but then I pulled Gabriel young. And that one was my first match where I really peaked. I really peaked. So at that, that point, your house, right? my dad and I had, had kind of discovered singles before that singles were a little bit of a gray area. We weren't, we weren't doing them so much. This one before that match happened, all we did was singles. All I did was singles all day long. It was, I'm going to take this guy's hand, I'm going to take his wrist, and then I'm going to cup him and commit the shoulder. That was my plan, and that was exactly how it went. It was perfect. Everything was perfectly executed. Then my next match was with Whisperer. So in the prep for Whisperer, I was a whole lot lighter. And and as everybody kind of remembers, I, I massively outweighed him. That was just because we agreed no weight cap. So I assumed he was going to be bulking like crazy too. And I, I did. I, I got up to like something like 210, I think. I got to 210 or so. Either way, I was I was pretty massive for that match. Two eleven, I think it was. It was, a, it was a, yeah, I think something like that. It was uh, the same idea as I pulled Gabriel Young. It was take the hand, followed by cup, followed by pin. And obviously, I, I was strong enough for that one. That one, I totally massive strength differential in that one, and just technical. I had him holding on for me from the go. I had I had everything go perfect. Now the next match was was much harder. It was against James English, who. At the time that I accepted the match, outweighed me. He was 225. So I knew I had to bulk up. I got to 235, which was the greatest form I've ever been in. I was totally massive. It was great. But I was super strong that day. My, my training was I worried about his flop and I worried about his cup. So it was all in the pronation and then my own supination and press and cup combo. So pretty much I was doing everything, but a lot of what I was doing was this kind of cutting inside just in case just in case he tried to flop me now he didn't which i was very happy about but if he had went for the flop that was my plan and with james his cup was was really good obviously in, in the third round we got in the straps and he was able to get that wrist bent and i had nothing i couldn't do anything could not do anything so well again after that what i did is i set up differently and instead of trying to go early and get the pin i just prioritized getting the hand and wrist i got him to hold on to me doing this and then I kind of kicked out into a low hand and then reclaimed the center. And then from there, it was, it was kind of over at that point. But, and then in my final match, what I just did with Kareen Hulk, was similar to James. I didn't worry so much about his cup, but I worried about his arm. So for this one, I just tried to get my arm as strong as I could. So I could, be, I knew I was never going to be as strong as his arm, but I could maybe be close. So I wanted to have the hand control that I assumed I would probably get, but then have my arm close enough that he couldn't just like rip me open, even without hand control. Luckily, I was strong enough and the setup was, worked well enough that I could go through them. So that's kind of a brief overview of my, my preps and how the matches went. Yeah, I, I, I think like, I think many people didn't think the, the last match was serious because there's actually two Korean Hulks. There's, yeah, there's, the, there's, there's the Korean that. Hulk that told you and the other one yeah. is the, the one that's friends with Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> No, 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 not like that. See, I got, I got confused there too. This is the same one, but there's another Korean Hulk who's a bodybuilder. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it, it, exactly. it gets all, it, I, I think so. So the guy I pulled was named Ji Young Ha. This other guy, I think, was named like Chul Soon or something. So something like something like that. Yeah, something, something like Chul that. Chul Soon. Yeah. So, no, the one I pulled, people were like, he's not an arm wrestler. He's been arm wrestling for 14 years. He's pulled the Arnold Classics. He's pulled, pulled in the Asian Opens. Yeah. He's pulled in the Korean Opens. He's had wars with Michael Todd. If you watch the after polls, he easily beats Ray, easily beats Aristo, has a good match with Nugo. People are sleeping on him a little bit, a little bit. But I think yeah. it's, I, I, I beat him. I beat him so convincingly, people thought he was an amateur, which is kind of a fun, fun thing to do. Beat somebody so bad they think they don't know how to wrestle. Yeah, actually, actually, I, if if that would have happened to me, I would I would go into a depression, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because it was so easy. And and I remember. I remember doing the, the the interviews and the the uh, content that's out there after after the match. You were saying you couldn't pull with your right because it was bloated. You know, I, I was and, sore. And it wasn't that easy for me. It really wasn't. Yeah, yeah, it looked easy, but it wasn't. I I saw you like I like I've been so long in arm wrestling, so I, I can tell. You know, you were you were winning really easily, but you were you were redlining like you were going a hundred percent. You know. That's people, the thing. People I, that Mike doesn't have that experience might think you were not, but actually you were like going like, and it was quick, but you know, it was like 105%. Yeah. 
at a second, in a second, you know? That's the thing. That's the thing. What I did there is I, I was fighting him so hard. I did not allow him to get to the spots he needed to, but I still had to do that fight. Like he still was super, super strong, but I was able to use my max strength to kind of make it so he wasn't as strong in the areas that mattered. But yeah, I feel like anytime I do any kind of hard tournament or hard matches, anytime you're really trying to win and going hundred percent, you're going to feel it the next day or, or you're doing something wrong. That, that's my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Of, of all these matches you, you have, uh, we have talked about, uh, which one was the, the, the toughest one of them all? So I would say the closest match I had was probably James because, I mean, he got a round off me. Nobody else had gotten one. So Korean Hulk is definitely stronger than James. It's just in different areas. Like I was able to, to easily take hand control of Korean Hulk, but the rest of it was tough to finish. With James, it was once I had the hand control, then I could win. But his hand was harder to take. So, so uh, uh, obviously, James' hand was stronger than that than the yes, Korean Hulk. Right? His hand was stronger. His arm was not stronger. Yeah. But you did a great job in all those matches. And, and, and with the Korean Hulk, I thought, I thought he might have something in you. Because, you know, he's that big. He must yeah, be strong, you know, and you handle it so well. Yeah. You know, how much did he weigh? I don't remember. So he was about 300 pounds. 300 pounds. And he was like, I me by, Yeah, he outweighed me by about 80 pounds. At that point, I was like 220, 225. Yeah. Damn. Uh, I think you know, five and you, three. I think it's five three. Five five three. Okay, people have to understand when you pull somebody that's heavier than you. When you grab his hand, you're gonna feel it. No matter what, you're gonna oh, yeah. feel that weight on that yeah, hand. Big, big hand. Yep. Yeah, and you gotta you gotta be strong enough to handle that. You know, and and this young man did that beautifully. Like you know, it's Thank it's you. in his genes, but even though it's impressive, for me it's impressive. You know. So, uh, how how does this matches came about? Yeah, like you got called out by the by your your opponents, or were there agreements, or how, how do how, how setting up a match with all the lag works these days? Yeah, so normally it's after a big match that I have, we take some time, and normally offers come rolling in. It'll be pull this guy here at this event, pull this guy here. Sometimes it'll be us, like with Korean Hulk, that was us, that was our idea. My dad had the idea, my dad's a big fan of him. He reached out to him, set that up that way. James English actually reached out to me through Chance Shaw, and that's how he got that one set up. Armas and Whisperer was, was a couple different people. The thing is, normally it's organized through a lot of different parties. It's not just, oh, I want to pull this guy, we're doing it. It's, this guy's interesting, he seems down, here's the venue, are they down? Like, and then it, it kind of bounce around. And once everybody kind of agrees, that's how the match gets set. Okay. Uh, without getting any, giving any, uh, like, in-depth details, how do you choose your, your, your matches from the offers that you get? So the way that I like to pick is I look at a couple different things. I look, one, at following. That's a very important thing, I think. I think it's what I'm trying to do is obviously I'm not, I'm not the best arm wrestler in the world right now. I'm, I'm not the epitome of elite arm wrestling. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring audience to arm wrestling. I'm trying to bring new eyes to the sport. People that potentially are in different different areas, like like powerlifting for Kareem Hulk. He has a big powerlifting base as well. Um, bodybuilding for James English. Kind of general fans for arm wrestling whisperer. I've been trying to kind of hit all the boxes. Maybe maybe like I'll do some at some point some strongman. Maybe some fighter. Maybe like it doesn't matter to me as long as it's as long as there's some sort of following. Now the other thing. The second, re the second thing that needs to happen, which I honestly think is a little bit more important, is I think it needs to be a match that challenges me in one way or another. A match that I have the opportunity to grow from. So Whisperer was kind of my base. Whisperer was the first guy. He he was kind of an all-around, going to be really strong. And I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure about that one. I beat him. Next up was James English, a guy who outlifts me everywhere, across the board. Way stronger, way stronger hand way bigger obviously like way way thicker looking and so that was a good challenge because i had to beat a hand and bicep strength that was better than my own next up was just a freak of strength so i had to beat somebody who was outlifting me by like 
even more by just ridiculous amounts. He has like a 700 pound bench, like numbers that are just unbelievable. So this was going to be a good challenge of arm wrestling specificity versus gym lifts and overall strength. So my next guy, probably I'm going to look for somebody who is, I mean, I, I think you probably know, I, I want to pull a bass Rana. I think that's public at this point. Anybody who's been following close enough. Yeah. I would like to pull a bass. The reason for that being he has a certain pedigree about him. He's very strong. He's young. He has got WAF accomplishments, which people always kind of like to bug me about and say I should pull WAF. I, I don't think I should pull WAF, but pulling this guy is kind of the next best thing for me, I think. I think since he's already won WAF and he obviously is there, pulling him will kind of get me a, a gauge of where exactly I'm at. And it's just a great opportunity to go into the Indian market, which is booming right now. And I think it's it's a great opportunity to grow the sport as well. Not only just is it a great match and it's a guy I'd, I'd love to pull, it's also a great growth opportunity. I agree with everything you're, you're, you you said about how you pick your matches and uh, this this last thing you said about the the Indian uh, the the environment in India for arm wrestling. Yeah. It's really really go it's really growing and it's really hitting. Uh, like it's good, it's good. They have their own league down there and they do the their own events. And they're they look great. They, it's 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 Dude. world class. You know they look great. It, it's great events, great events. So yeah, it's Pro Panda um, League. I love those guys. They're great. Yeah, yeah. Actually, my friend Vasil, uh, uh, last last time they had the the uh the tournaments and stuff. That they have a really you know nice format. Like like teams, like this team against this team, and at the end they they they. The winner is is a team, a team, no, not a person. You know, it's, yeah, it's I fun. like it. It's fun. So do it's I. Fun. So, uh, I wanna I wanna touch the subject of of people that have a lot of following, and and I don't know if 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 they have approached you, but let's just just throw out some names. Schoolboy, yeah, sure. Schoolboy, yeah. So the thing is, Schoolboy, right now. Schoolboy's better than me. Schoolboy beat me. He's 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 too strong. People kind of sleep on Schoolboy a little bit. Schoolboy is really good. He's he's he, he's too big for me right now. At some point, I'm sure that match will happen. It's just it's too early at this point. He's he's gonna be he's gonna beat me. Not it's, it's not, I'm not even worried about losing. It's just it's not a match at this point. He'd just be too strong. There's many guys in between me and Schoolboy, but definitely yeah. at some point that match will happen. And 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 Akimbo. I know you had some comments on, on, on a video I saw. Uh, what's going on with that? Yeah, so the issue with Akimbo is he's done a couple things that I don't really like. He's he's said a couple things, and some of them have gotten back to me. And I, I think I really think he's just trying to do it all for PR. He's just trying to promote. Like I, I, I don't take it too personally. I think he's really just trying to kind of hype the matchup. But he said a couple things about me I don't really like. I don't really like it, so... I think it's it's kind of a dumb idea for a match. I outweigh him by like 30 kilo and I'm just I'm so much bigger than him. I'm so much bigger that it just doesn't really make sense. Not really. And I felt this hand and he's not gonna top roll me. He's not gonna hook me. I'm 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 gonna beat his hand. I'm I'm too big for him. And I think he gets that. I don't think he actually wants a match because nobody has actually reached out to me. They just kind of say it online. Like and I have connection with him. I have like liked his stuff and he's like mine. So there is there is connection. If he really wanted the match, he would text me, but he hasn't. Because I don't think he actually wants one. So I, I, I'm not too worried about Akimbo. I think he's just I think he's just having some fun. But if he really wants a match, maybe we can set something up. I just I'm not cutting, so he's gonna have to pull me how I am. Yeah, and 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 this guy looks big, but he's not really that big. Right? He's 75 kilo. He's 75 kilo. He's too small. It's just you it, know, Whisperer was bigger than him. Whisperer was bigger than him. Like, come on. Yeah. So <laughs> and this this kid that was uh making a bus this this week, uh this 15-year-old Russian, I don't know his name. Uh uh, you saw the the video with him pulling the the strong man and he beating me he really easily. And and, I'm not and sure. he was pulling he was he was pulling in an event that I Akimbo pulled that kid. He, he they were saying he was he was uh 15 years old. Uh, oh, I think I saw that. Akimbo beat him, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think I saw that. I wasn't sure who the guy was, but he's good prospect coming up. Yeah. 
apparently. They say that I mean, he's, they it's say the same he's issue. years old, but I've seen him before. I think he's older. Okay, are they just saying 15? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're saying, but I've seen him before. And I And I think he's like maybe 19, 20 years old. He's not really 15. I, that's, I think, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I know the guy you're talking about. That guy again, he looks cool. I, I wouldn't pull him, he's just too small. Like it's it's not it doesn't make sense for me. Everybody accuses me of taking matches with guys that are too small. Why would I pull him out? Why would I pull this guy? But definitely I'm excited to see if he really is 15. That's quite impressive. Yeah. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe maybe you haven't heard about this guy, but I'm 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 gonna introduce you to him. Have you heard of Fernando Cari? He's Peruvian What's... from Fernando Cari. He's Peruvian. He lives in New Jersey. He's 15 years old, and he is strong as fuck. <laughs> Have you heard about him? I, I think I'm so bad with names, but I do recognize it. I do recognize the name. I'm not sure. He's real good? Yeah, he's real good. He's 15 years old. He's real he? good. He's from Peru, and he lives in New Jersey. He, he trains with the High Fi Club. I think I know the guy you're talking about. I think I know the guy. I'm pretty sure. Did he did he call me out and say he beat me? I might have seen that clip. Yes. 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 Okay, I saw that. Yeah, no, I, I know that guy. He he's great. That guy, I've I've watched him when when he made that kind of call out, I watched a couple of his things. He looks real good. Looks real good. I, I think I'm a bit too big for him, but but I would love to get together and bowl him at some point. I mean, he's he's still growing, you know, and, and maybe at yeah, some point exactly. in the future yeah. you might you you might end up of you know facing each other. But he's a uh he's a really nice kid. Uh, his family moved to New Jersey and he lives there with his three brothers and they all arm wrestle and they are really strong and he's really talented for that for that age and and like I, I say he's, yeah. he's 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 uh he's, you know he's just still growing you know so maybe yeah, you, 15 you is real young that's real young yeah mm-hmm. and and you know he he is uh he's a good friend and he admires you and and I had it you know I had to ask you because of I know course. you saw the yes. clip. <laughs> I saw <laughs> I it I saw it yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the, I mean, I, I'd love to do something with them. We have a couple guys actually. Um, we're coming up around. So we, we have a guy named Thomas Dumas. He's fourteen, fifteen. That guy is incredible as well. That guy, he just he just won Eva, and and he is very interesting. That might be interesting for you to because we have kind of a freaky fifteen year old, fourteen year old. And if you guys, if you're saying the same thing, that could be interesting because we got two young guys. Yeah. But I think maybe once he gets gets a bit older. I mean, fifteen. You still got a lot, a lot of room to grow. A lot of room to grow from fifteen. So it could yeah. be, could be interesting in a couple of years for sure. Yeah, and, and you know, you know, for the for the for the guys your age and around, it's very exciting. It's a very exciting scene. There's a lot of guys that are oh, good. Yeah. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you about Fernando. There's this other kid from Arizona. He's he's Mexican. His name is uh, Donald Mata. He's really good, you know. And he's always following you and and you know and marrying you because you're you're the same age, you know. And yeah. and and that's 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 the 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 greatest part of having you doing what you're doing, you know. You're 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 making way for others, you know. And all that's these kids, that's the goal, man. That's this, the goal. That's the goal. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's all these kids look up to you. They they know your father, and 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 they say he's great, but they look up to you, and they they're that following makes me very your happy footsteps. To hear. You know, that makes me very happy so to you you and your family. Actually, I I I. I was I texted your dad today, like like saying like you must be be really really proud of your son because like I was saying when I started this, you're doing something nobody has ever done before, and you're doing a great job and you have a big following and people are admiring you. Not 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 old guys like me, like people your age and younger, and they are motivated to do something better because they're following you. You know what I'm saying, and and that's Ooh. that's awesome, man. That's awesome, and and I can keep going. You know, ah, uh, do you remember the at the at East versus West, uh, 15 <coughs> in Orlando? These guys, uh, Noego yeah. Loy, the Argentinian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, I met that guy. Ask, uh, he told me ask 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 Odin that he would if we would had a a, a super match with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's I had, think, he I has think a, he's a little bit too light. A little bit too light. We, we pulled a bit, but yeah. Yeah, he's you know, good. he's actually he has a really big following in Argentina. Really, you know, yeah, there's a big buzz around him. Like, like he he does he's, he's he hasn't been a year I'm wrestling yet. He's really big, he's really strong, and he has beaten 
everyone in Argentina, and 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 mm-hmm. you know he he's at the point where where people hate him. You know, oh, really, because he's, so, he's getting yeah, some haters. He's good. So good. That, that means he's made it. That means he's made it. Exactly. Yeah. That all all us that we get haters because we all have haters. When you get the haters, you're doing something good. And you know who told me exactly. that? Who told you that? Your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's right. He's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. So he like uh, I did a podcast with him, and he had like uh, in two days, it, it had like a thousand views. Nice. You know. So so uh, he has a big following. So maybe maybe that would interest you. And in somewhere in you know he's like twenty three, twenty three, something like that. Maybe down the road, you know. Possible. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, a lot of guys. There's a lot of guys around that area. I would love to get guys in in like maybe South America areas, border of North America. I I, I want to kind of get the whole area. I pulled from I pulled guys from the U.S. I pulled guys from from Asia. I'd like to I'd like to hit every continent, every kind of area. At one point, I want to have like a map of the world, and I want to be like every country. That's this guy, this guy, this guy. This. So I I would like to come down to to like more more south area and kind of work my way down maybe at some point but I, yeah, yeah i can I mean, help you with all that all these guys all these guys sound like all fun i can help you with that and i can even join you just to be your guide you know or translator yeah. or whatever you want i could join you and it. we could do it i love it you know we could start mexico down you know there's there's really mm-hmm. young guys we got uh this kid uh ian morgan he's like as tall as your dad and his his hands are bigger than your dad's really big guy yeah, huh? and he's and he's like 19 years old you know nice. and and he has he has a, a a really special story because he had an accident and his left part the, <laughs> the left part of his body is is not as strong as his right and it's mm. all concentrated on his right arm and that you know, gets scary just, that gets scary you know, yeah you know and and he hasn't he doesn't have that much experience but you know he's really good and he's really strong and mm. and and you know there's there's I mean, the sport is growing so much in Latin America at a, at a, at a really fast pace, you know, that it's out of control. It's, it's growing so much. And, and, and I'm happy. And I'm happy to be part of that evolution in the sport in Latin America, you know, and, and help, helping everybody, you know. Now, I want to ask you, uh, how's your brother? He's good. He's, he's doing really good. Yeah, he's, he's doing quite good. He's training hard. He's, he's bulking up. I think over the next maybe couple of months, if he sticks with it, Milo might might start kind of coming on the scene as well, which which I could not be more happy about. I, I I keep trying to push him towards it, and finally it seems like it's stuck a bit, but it's it's too soon to say for sure. Yeah, because I saw he was training and he, he's kind of disappeared from social media a bit and everything. And I know you did after a match, you you took a break, but yeah. I was wondering because because uh, I mean, oh. You, your sister, and your brother are really good arm wrestlers, you know. And 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 I know Milo wanted to get into it, and I'm just wondering if you had any plans, you know, uh, pulling tournaments or doing super matches, anything. So so nothing firm right now. It's the same kind of thing as as me right now. It's just training, just training. And once he kind of settles, and once we kind of see how strong he really is, then we'll decide where to go from there. Because he hasn't really consistently ever trained. So we don't know how good he actually is. He's been, he's done some tournaments here and there. He's done some kind of fun super matches, but nothing, nothing legit to know how good he is. So he still has a long way to go in his training. But once, once he shows consistency and shows the drive, then we will help him gladly. We'll help him on, on the, like, whatever it takes him the rest of the way. Yeah. I mean, he's your brother. He, 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 he used to beat yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he must be good. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Use keyword used to. Keyword used to. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, and your sister, I know your sister is a really young and beautiful girl. And, you know, uh, uh, I know she's a, I remember this old videos in, in, in YouTube of, of your, your sister arm wrestling. <laughs> and she was yeah. beating the boys. And I remember this, this, she's this, a killer. this, this video of, of her. Looking, I I think it was uh, it must must have been of your ma- mom or your dad, and she was like like my arm hurts, and 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 they were to just keep going, and she just kept beating guys like other kids, you know. And she's really good, you know. She's your sister; she has it on her blood. Yeah. Is she planning at some point, whenever she finds it, you know, suitable for her, 
getting into arm wrestling more seriously? I, I hope so. I really hope so. The thing is, she's she's a 16 year old girl. She's she's very focused on friends and school and like not 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 so much. Still, still lacks some confidence in herself to really be able to dedicate herself to sport. I think one day that will change. I think in the next couple of years, she might start to train it more. She's actually been coming out to the club every once in a while. So every once in a while, she comes out and trains with us, which is rare, but it does happen. She, I would say, is probably the most genetically gifted out of all the three kids. She has been always, always just a freak of physicality. Like, Without training, she'd win every race she does, like like cross country, all the different the distances, and every tournament she competes in, she either wins it or the only one she hasn't won in my memory is nationals this year, and she got second without training. And, and she beats all the guys, she beats all the seniors, the girls, she beats all the way up. So she is super gifted. It's just she doesn't quite use, she doesn't quite train, she doesn't quite love it yet. I think one day she will but not quite yet. I'm hopeful. I'm you hopeful. Know, you know, uh, uh, us that, that, and, and when I say us, uh, I mean the, the arm wrestling from, from Canada to, to Chile, you know, yeah. our goal is to, to, uh, we have arm wrestling, men do it, boys do it. It's, 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 it's a nat natural part of life, but mm -hmm. we are trying to, to, make the the women's category grow you know and i, and, I think and, it's very important and the youth category grow but you got that cover you got that cover <laughs> so i think if at some point your sister would get into it i yeah. think many girls will follow her it could be big it could be very big she could do a lot for the sport i think she could do more for the sport than i ever can i think her influence in the sport would be would be massive it could get girls all around the world into it which would be huge for this huge because because if all the girls like it the boys will follow everybody knows that exactly so it's exactly yeah. it's it's perfect it's totally yeah. perfect and, and and you know i know the sport is going and it's doing great things but you know we need that 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 female like like a new female face that that I would agree. you know pull the young girls you know because the ones That, the ones that we already know, they are great, but, you know, people get old. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we've got actually one up and coming. You know, you know Nisa Camden? Yes, she, she's yes, I know her. I know her. Huge following. Huge following. Yes, she has. Her super match with, I think it was with Sarah Collins, got like 2 million views. Like yeah. massive. She, she's very closely followed because, because everything we were saying before, massive following, very athletic great personality so it, it's it's very nice to follow her i think she could do a lot for the sport as well but i would love to see Avery also do that yeah yeah it's great. and 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 it's nice that you brought the uh nisa up because mm -hmm. yes you're right she has a great following and everything she does it turns to gold you know i, I haven't seen her pull in a while but yes she could be she could be that 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 girl that pulls Definitely. the younger ones you know could be, into could the be. Sport. Mm -hmm. so uh I was going to ask you what was next for you and, and were you really going to pull the, the WAF champion? And, but you already answered that, that you're really into yeah. that idea. And I it, hope is so. it really going to happen? So right now we are in kind of discussion with them. It's, it's hard to really say exactly where we are because it's still so early stages, but I hope so. I want this match to happen. Like there's been a little bit of radio silence from Abbas, but he's liked some things that make me think that he wants to do it. And like, And he said before he wants to do it. So I, I don't know for sure, but I am very hopeful. I, I think it'll probably happen. Very likely. Well, I hope I hope it does because it would be a great match. Yeah. And, and a great test for you, you know, looking forward down the line and where you're going and where you're accomplishing, you know. Now, we've talked about your career and what you're doing. Uh, what's your goal like your main goal in your career as an arm wrestler when you're 40 years old and you look back where do you see yourself and 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 what do you want to be your accomplishment what like uh, i want to when i'm 40 years old i'm going to be on top of the world of arm wrestling but this is the legacy i want to build and that i look back and i and i see 
what I've done. This is what I want to do, what I want to leave to this world. Yeah, so, so for me, there is a couple different goals. I've got mainly three, mainly three goals that I really want. Number one, obviously, be the best I can be. Whatever that is, if it's, if it's world champion, if it's world champion in the weight class, if it's wherever it is, I just want to be the best I can be. Of course, I will be pushing for number one, but I, I just, I really am just trying to make myself right. Now, my second goal is to grow the sport and just make it have a bigger following, make it more accessible, make it pay better so people can do it more easily without having to worry so much about secondary jobs and, and really make it a possibility that people like me can, can chase their dreams of becoming a great arm wrestler without having to worry about getting food that night. So that's my second goal. My third goal is I want to, I want to grow natural arm wrestling. I want to grow tested leagues. I want to make it, I want to make, so the reason I want that is, is because of mainstream sponsors and availability. Whenever a league or, or kind of organization, say UFC, for example, introduces testing, they bring in way more money from, from ads, from sponsorships, from everything. Because now companies with billions and billions of dollars will back them financially. And that will grow the sport to a level that nobody's yet seen. So I think introducing natural arm wrestling and enforcing it will allow our sport to really like explode to the next level. Because at this point, companies like Red Bull, companies like Monster, they could all sponsor this. But they won't because... Because it's it's a little bit dirty right now. It's a little bit it's it's seen as kind of a dirty sport as like a like a like a garage sport. But if we can make it if we can make it clean, if we can make it nice, if we, if we can make it young, if we can make it look good, I think all of these things come with testing with with natural athletes. I think it brings in everything good for the sport, and and obviously it's very hard. And I, and I I hate to be like somebody who judges people based on what they do with their own personal, like it's all, it's all, it's your choice. If you want to take steroids, if you want to do all these different things. And I think it's just, it's just such a great thing we can possibly do in the future. And it's something I will work towards. You know, I remember uh, a while back, uh, the subject came up at East versus West and, and Anging told that, mm -hmm. that it's necessary. And, it is necessary. And, and, and I understood and I got what Anging was saying because of everything that you just said yeah you know? and 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 we have the uh i'm kind of romantic about arm wrestling you know yeah i i've been i've been with and in a lot of sports and i've been champion in in a lot of sports powerlifting bodybuilding everything and arm wrestling and but arm wrestling is the one i i, I cannot leave behind you know yeah. I, i gotta keep doing it you know And, 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 and my, my romantic vision is exactly that. I mean, I want the, our sport to be in the Olympics, you know? Yes, okay. very nice. That's, that's, that's like the, the, the top of the world, right? <laughs> but, but I want my sport not to be associated with bars, restaurants. Exactly, alcohol. exactly. I agree. I want it. I want people to know and, and when I say arm wrestling to think about a great stage and people you know doing good things like in Puerto Rico when when you talk about arm wrestling on we call it pulseo and people just think about bars and restaurants you know and stuff like yeah. that now I had a really really bad experience uh uh in an event I put on in in January And after that, after that bad experience, I, I, I got really, really uh, depressed because I, I, I didn't think the sport would get that dirty, you know, stealing money and, and uh, stabbing really? people in the back and all that. Right. So uh, there's, there's these kids in, in, in my gym that they, yes. uh, they, they started uh, approaching me and wanted to learn about arm wrestling. And, and they, they motivated them and my wife motivating me to go to the North American Championship in Mexico, right? Mm -hmm. And I had a great experience. Uh, I didn't think I would make it because I've been out of competition for so long. I, 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 I did well. I did good. I, I got like third place in my category first time, you know. First time Puerto Rico was in an international event. But 
to the point what I'm getting is uh, I was I remember I was talking I was talking to Simon Berishoa and he shook my hand after we had the conversation we had and he shook my hand and hugged me and, and told me Manolo stop arm wrestling in bars and restaurants and that like it squished my heart because he I I just he was right and yeah. and and I didn't have, I never had the experience I had at the North American Championships. You know, I've, I've arm wrestled in Puerto Rico and I became champion, you know, and everything like that. But it was in bars and restaurants and in, and in an environment that it was not family friendly, you know. Yeah. And going over there and experiencing that and, and seeing, seeing the other face of the sport that not everybody sees. That's the thing. Not everybody sees that thing. Oh, you know? it's true. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's, that's what we as a community have to aspire to be, you know, do events family friendly with doping and, and, and something good and honorable. You know what I'm saying? I agree. So, I totally, I, I am totally agreeing with what you're saying. Yeah. So uh, it's the future. It's the future of the sport. It's bound to it's happen. It needs to happen. Yeah. It needs to. Yeah. And I think, I think we're moving, I'm, I mean, we're moving in that direction and it's, I it's going to be a bumpy road. It's going to be Definitely. a bumpy road because, you know, when people, there's a lot of, like I say, uh, social media is, it's, it's good for certain things, but it's bad for other things. And, and people are addicted, not to drugs, yeah. but to likes and views. And they it's, milk, it's, yeah. they milk the drama and they depend on it. And, and, and it's, it's going to be a bumpy road, but I'm sure we're going to get over it. And everything is going to align, and and you know it's a big planet, it's a big world. There's space for everybody. We just have to respect each other and just move forward, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 I'm happy to see the face of the future of arm wrestling with this kind of mentality. And I'm talking about you, you know. Well, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Because uh, if if you're so young and you're thinking like that, and you know that's the right way, but where, where's there's no way to escape. You know, we're gonna end on that, on that, uh, on that field. Uh, sure. And and I don't know if I see it. Maybe I'm I'm 43 now. Maybe I maybe I see it in 10 years. Maybe I see it in less. But I I know we're gonna get to that. So so <laughs> it's it's great hearing that. Now I wanted to ask you. You mentioned something uh, a little earlier, but would you like or would you consider maybe later doing Waff worlds or something. So that sort? it's 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 hard for me to rationalize WAF because for me to to do WAF, it's I have to go through a series of things where I have to I'm, I'm paying all this money and I'm going to a tournament that I can't I can't even win money at. I can't even make it worth my time. It's it's in my opinion, there is a level above WAF, and that's East versus West, King of the Table, and and pro supermatch series events. So if I can stay up here where I'm, I'm making money, I'm pulling the people I want to pull, I'm, I'm, I'm growing everything, I think this is going to WAF is a little bit of a step down. Now, WAF is awesome. I never want to badmouth WAF in any way, shape, or form. WAF is a lot of the gateway. It's They go through WAF and then go to the pro cards. I'm in a very unique position where I have been able to kind of bypass a lot of this and jump right to the pro cards, which I am ever thankful for. But for me to kind of step down to WAF is, in my opinion, it's a, it's a step down, like, like, like I was saying. I just think there's a lot of opportunities that I have, and I only have so much time. And, and I think to optimize that time, it's, WAF is not my number one priority. If, if for some reason it lined up where it was WAF was this weekend, it was, it was good, it, everything worked out, and it was going to be perfect, I could compete, I would do it. But I think that is very unlikely it's going to happen. In 2027, worlds are going to be it's in Canada. Canada. It's in Canada. Yeah, that that one is is possible. That one is possible. That would make me 23, so I would be in in the U23, which yeah. or, or open. It depends on which one I pull. But WAF is interesting to me. <laughs> one big issue with WAF that I know would happen is the way that I RMS is 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 very setup based. It's the way that I've trained. It's the way that I've fought. And it's because of super matches. I would have to massively alter my style. I would have to massively change everything just to pull and whack. And the issue with that is 
I'm probably, I hate to say, I hate to be that guy, but I'm probably going to get targeted. I'm probably going to get targeted by the refs. Oh, it's a Larrett. Pull him out. So I, I have, I have buddies. I have buddies that have gone to WAF and been fouled out for nothing, like zero. Like my good friend Alexander Gushadz. Yeah. If if you watch his 2023 WAF, he gets fouled out for doing this, pinning. So first round he fouls in a foul. There's, there was no way it was a foul. The second round he holds and does this to make sure there's no foul, and he gets fouled out because they didn't like him. So I worry. I'm going to get that times like a million. So there's, there's so many reasons that just don't make WAF appealing to me, but there is also reasons that I would pull, but it's just, it's very situational. I don't think it'll happen. Maybe in 2027. You know, uh, I respect what you're saying and, and it makes a lot of sense. You are another level. You, you are another plane of arm wrestling and it doesn't make sense to come and, and do a tournament like that. But, It could happen at some point, like it, yeah. like you just said. If if it, if it makes sense at the moment, you 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 would uh you would do it. But you're right that yes, you're gonna get targeted. You're gonna get targeted, and yeah. and and you know it, it makes a lot of sense. And I respect your opinion on that. Uh, I would love to see you there, but not just you. You know, I, I would love to see uh Adam Wozinski do worlds and 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 other guys like uh, in the states. Uh, let's say um. Uh, Uh, Adam, uh, even Hunter Noss, you know, people to, to represent America, you know, because uh, uh, yeah. Europe is dominating everything, you know. The reason for that is because a lot of the European countries are sponsored by WAF. If they yes. win, they get paid. They're getting paid for it. That's why you see, like, that's why you see Kazakhstan be so dominant, Georgia be so dominant. It's because they're getting paid to win at WAF. All the American pullers, the Canadian pullers, and just the, the whole Americas in general, I don't think anybody's getting paid from WAF. I could be wrong. There could be weird sponsorship programs, but not that I know about. So money talks. If you, if you are able to like, support yourself in arm, with arm wrestling, you are able to become a better arm wrestler. If you need to also have a job, it takes away your time from training. So if you were to be the greatest arm wrestler of all time, it would be, you would be somebody who didn't have another job, who dedicate all their time to arm wrestling, who had all the food they could eat, Who didn't have to worry about about having to pay bills that would create the best arm wrestler so all these arm wrestlers who are up and coming who want to be great competing in WAF will, will probably cost them thousands of dollars and yes. it's just a lot of these up and coming arm wrestlers don't have the money to do that like it just does it does not make sense financially and end of the day you need to eat food you need to live in a place where you're not getting rained on all day so it's very important that you're living and training arm wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's a choice, you know, it's a choice. People that want to do that can do that if they can yeah. do that, you know, exactly. I, 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 I represent uh, Puerto Rico and NAF and everything. And, and, you know, everything comes out of pocket, you know, and, and travel and everything. I do know the only sponsorship from WAF is that the world combat games, uh, they choose uh, the winners of the, North American Championship and the South American Championship, and they paid for their travel and expenses to go to the World Combat Games. I think they're going to do the same next year, 2025. They did it in 2023. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing that people are saying that it's going to be the same next year in 2025. So that's the only program uh, uh, in America, like from north to south, that it's It's it, and and they're not paying you; they're just paying your expenses. You know. Yeah, you exactly. Would have, you will have to take time off from work, and maybe vacation time and everything. And 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 if you that's that's your goal and that's what you're gonna do, it's great. You'll do it. But if, if you're not focused on that because you need other things, you know, at the end of the day, you gotta do what you gotta do. You know. Yeah. So, Oren, I want to thank you for having this great conversation. I I thought it would be longer. Maybe maybe it has. We were just talking so fast, but I like to thank you for being here. Uh, I would like to ask anybody and everybody that's been watching into this part of the show to give Odin some love. I know you guys know him and you follow him and everything, but I got to say it. I got to say it. Go to Odin Laird. Look for him on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Follow his his content. He makes hilarious content, like like funny stuff, like like 
guys, he's it's not arm wrestling. You know, you, you got your arm wrestling thing, but he he has really funny videos. You Thank know, you, buddy. Thank they're you. cool. They're cool. You you Thank enjoy. You. Them. So go and 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 watch his stuff and give him some love. And and anything you want to add uh, to end the show? Ah, uh, stay powerful, guys. Chase chase what you love. Chase your dreams. And anything is possible if you work for it. That that's about it. Thank you for having me on, buddy. I really appreciate it. Okay, I I want to I'm gonna ask this last question. I want to I want to make this this show about you and everything, but okay, this is the end. Mm -hmm. How is your your dad's cut going? It's good. It's going good. It's going okay. according to plan. He's gonna make the way. He's gonna be okay. It's gonna be a hard cut, but he's gonna be okay. Yeah, he's been walking all day. He's been eating clean. He's he's everything is going according to plan. The cut will suck, but he's gonna make it. I know your dad is is a, a really you know he's he's skinny by nature. You know he doesn't have yeah. to you know, work that hard to lose the weight. But his strength wise, his lifting, is he staying, you know, strong. He's strong right now. Yeah. Um, the thing is his lifts, he didn't push it like crazy this time. He didn't push his singles like crazy. But on the table, he feels different. He feels different right now. He feels so good. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be very hard for, for Trico to beat him. Very hard because he's gonna make the cut. As soon as he weighs in, he's gonna be way back up. He'll be he'll probably pull Petrico Weighing around 260, which is he's, – he's going to be bigger. He's going to be That's bigger. 30 though. pounds overnight. That's 30 pounds. And the thing is, if you do the cut properly, 30 pounds is nothing. It's nothing. You rehydrate at that, that weight, you can bounce. No problem. Brad Grundy once did around 35 pounds in like 24 hours. He went – he cut down, weighed in, and weighed in at 231 was like 265 the next day. Fuck. If you do it properly, that's, that's no problem. No problem. You know, what worries me is is the travel, you know? Yeah, yes. He's, he's getting in early. He's going to be okay. He'll be there. The travel does suck because it makes you retain a bit more fluid, but but he'll be okay. He's got time to walk it off. He's got time there. He'll be, he'll be fine. He'll be, he'll be arriving like a week before, right? Something like that. I'm not exactly sure. So probably around, around a week before, yeah. How do you think, not, not about the result, How obviously you're gonna say your dad's gonna win. I mean, yeah, yeah of course. We all gonna yeah. say Devin's gonna win, you know. But how do you see the match going? Like what style? Do you think it's gonna end up in the King's move or your dad is gonna go Prutnik on him, you know, like like he did Prutnik or how do you see it? I predict round one it'll slip, it'll go straps. And I think it will be top roll versus King's move. I think the rise will be very important. I think Petrenko might get goaded into holding on a little bit too much, and he's going to start getting his wrist cracked. And Petrenko will try to flop, but at that point, I think it's going to be too late. I think he's going to he's going to get get the wrist cracked. He's going to edge it in. Petrenko's going to try to flop, but I I just don't think it's there. I, Petrenko is not known for his flop. If you watch, try to flop John Brzezink. John just held it on the arm and kind of worked it back in. I think it'll look very similar to the John match, but I think he'll open a bit more. That, that's what I predict. Yeah, you were saying about all that, and I was I was just saying it on my mind because I see <laughs> exactly the same thing, like the the wrist and kind of the of the of the flop press. Uh I think I think your 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 dad's gonna do good. I think uh, it's gonna be a historic match. You know, yeah. uh, I don't think anybody has been world champion in that many weights in so little nope. time. No, 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 not nobody. No, at least definitely not anybody in East versus West. And 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 at his age, going against way younger guys. Triple so, champ, triple champ. You know, it's 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 gonna be a historic event. Is it gonna be the 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 main event? That's the main event. Yeah. The the the, the other one is uh is Al Michael Khan. Khan. Oh yeah, it's 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 for the one fifteen uh, left hand. Alzan and and, and Mer yeah, that one's gonna be fucking crazy. That I, one's I, gonna be so good. I think I think it's gonna be easy. I think Alisan would just watch him three times. Oh, I no way. I think not. No, I got Matt Schenkel winning the whole thing. I think Matt Schenkel will be really. People go. Alisan is a freak of understand. nature. Alisan is a freak. Alisan is a freak, and he is a. And he's scary like two sixty five. I I am telling you. Matyshenko is right there with him. He's right there with him. I, I think people sleep on Matyshenko a lot. A lot. No, I know incredible. he's good. I know he's good, but I do think Alisson is like, fuck. 
I mean, he's beating. He, he, he was beating be, uh, guys one fifty kg when he was weighing hundred kg, and uh, right now he's, he's one twenty. He is a freak. He's a total freak. Uh, yeah, I, I'm. I'm not. I'm not arguing with that. Alexander's a total freak. I think. I think it will be a very good match. I think it'll turn around. Alexander might get the first couple, and then Matyshenko will turn it around, and it'll be hook every time. Probably outside of straps. I don't think they're slipping, and it's going to be a great match. And, and, and Alexander might just be him. He, he really might. But I see it turning around round two or three. And and do you see do you do you see Michael getting his revenge against Gennady? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Michael is looking super focused. He's looking super strong. And Gennady's a bit untested. He ever since his bicep, yeah. who knows? Who knows? He's probably going to have a little bit of hesitation. He might not have the same trust in it like he would if he pulled some other match. But yeah. knowing Gennady, I don't think that'll matter much. Gennady's a total fighter. I'm excited to see it. I think Michael's going to beat him. I think it's going to be a good match, though. Now, would you would you like to see your dad going against Michael Todd again or Gennady? Oh, I mean, everybody wants to see both those matches. Both those matches are awesome. I, I would like to see. I would like to see the Michael Todd match again. But the issue is I, I'm a huge Michael Todd fan. So it's hard for me to want to say that because, because I mean, I, I don't, I never like to see Michael lose, but I also want to see my dad win. So that would be a great match. My dad pulling Gennady as well. Both, both good matches, really. Both, both are really good. So uh, that's about it. That's all I got. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you, buddy. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. No, thank you for being here. And, and like I say, uh, uh, We'll, I would like to keep working with you down the road, you know, uh, of course. some shows of course. and some collaborations and whatever. So, everybody, go look for Autumn Lad in all social media, following, giving some love. And we love you right here in Puerto Rico, and we'll love to have you. And thank you for being here. Subscribe course, to Purcell TV. Thank you. Share the video so everybody can see it. And see you next time.